Hello and welcome to DNQ Football, the return of AFC World Cup qualification, Asian World Cup qualification with the second round, the spicy second round, 36 teams, nine groups of four. Mm. Mm. Above Ryan is going to appear our How It Works video um, for all of, well, the Asian region. Uh, we've done a whole series on it, but of course the Asian region and how it works, because we're not going to get into that now. But all you need to know is top two go through in yep. each group of four. We've had round one, Ryan. Lots of our favourite teams have already gone out um, because of the double leggers. Lots of the teams have gone. There are still some fantastic minnows left, which we'll talk about. We'll flash up each group as we talk about it. But yes. I've just got to say, before we get into it, round two might be my favourite round. You knew I was going to say that. Might be my favourite round. You say that before every round. It's not true. <laughs> every competition. I think this might be my favourite. I do say that about a it's lot a of good competitions. It, mate, it's a good round. It's a good round. I would argue it's maybe not as good as round one, where it was just a pure sea of Minnow Nation fixtures. Um, but it is a good round. And what we do have is we do still have some really really tasty looking groups because and are we going to get that in round three probably not because more and mm. more of of the of the smaller international minnows are going to um fall by the wayside as we go through the qualification process but in round two we've got a really nice blend of some groups that offer a chance of, of some smaller nations making their way through we've got some really we'll have some really cool sort of david versus goliath fixtures um and Yes, you've got a, a nicer blend probably than what you had in round one and then in mm -hmm. versus what you'll have in, in round three. So, hey, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe it is Maybe it is your, your favourite round and, and maybe you, you make a good point there. Well, I just think that the fact that these teams get to play so many games. So there's, there's, there's four yeah, that's teams a that's a shout. in each group. But, but thankfully, we have home and away fixtures. If it was a single round robin, like a World Cup group, then it definitely wouldn't be this one. But the fact that round two goes from November 23, which is when we're doing our preview for it, all the way through to June next year yeah, uh, before yeah. these groups are finalised, it's a really meaty round um, that still has, as you say, some of our favourite teams from the region in it. Yeah. And Very with meaty. The, it is extremely meaty. <laughs> Very um, meaty. I think that with this round, as, as I've said about other things, let's just pop an appreciation film for how good this round is. And, <laughs> an appreciation uh, film. <laughs> and let's get straight into it. Um, what was that? What video was that on? CONCACAF, how it works. <laughs> you just came out with, let's just pop an appreciation film for how good. Oh, it's brilliant, hey, mate. It's, it's catching on. I um, I thoroughly enjoy I actually, yeah, I enjoyed it at the time and I've enjoyed it again, probably even more so now. So, yeah, let's just pop an appreciation for, for, for this round. Yeah, so it, so we're recording this, mate. We're recording this on, on Friday. We've both had a, a busy long week at work, but we thought we'd mm -hmm. hop on and, and do a quick second round preview. So we're recording on Friday the 10th of November. As you said, it starts November. It starts on the 16th. So match day one is on the 16th of November, 2023. Final match day, the 11th of June, 2024. Mm. So it's a long old period. Now, mate... You've talked through the, the logistics and the format of it. How do you want to go about this? Um, should we just go through each one and just throw out some awful footballing opinions? Let's do it. Uh, I think it would be rude not to. We'll group by group it. We're not going to spend that much time on each group because otherwise we could speak for hours and hours about round two. And of mm. course, as always on DNQ Football, the focus will be on a combination of uh, the Minnow Nation teams and also maybe some of the lower ranked sides lower ranked, not 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 Minnow Nation, but still lower than than other sides uh, that might get to the World Cup. Uh, and let's let's start with with Group A and a couple of teams we'll, we'll speak about in there. A uh, Group A, Qatar, India, yep. Kuwait and Afghanistan. Afghanistan, of course, edging out Mongolia in round one to make it through to certainly not the trickiest group. How do you see this one going? It's a really, really nice group for mm. In my opinion, well, obviously Qatar, um, because yeah. they will look at it thinking, "Well, that's a, this is a a nice, comfy ticket into the into the third round." But you could say that it's a nice group for both Afghanistan and, and Kuwait, who will probably think that they can potentially get a result against each other. We'll come on to Afghanistan maybe in just a minute in a bit more detail. There, for me personally, I think the it's the draw of all draws for India, mm. who will be striving to go 
as far as they possibly can in in this World Cup qualification campaign. They were doing some really sort of almost sneaky fixtures pre the World Cup draw being played where they were didn't they play like Lebanon about three or four times in different They were trying to get above them in the FIFA world rankings. Because they were trying to beat them so that they could accrue, accrue enough FIFA points to hop above them in the rankings, which meant that they were then seeded for this draw or something yes. like that, isn't it? Yeah. So essentially, yeah. And it, and they have then got the absolute plum draw where they have got Qatar, who are probably favourites for the group. Um, then they've got India, who are... Um, well, they've got themselves obviously in their 102nd rank in the world. And then you've got Afghanistan that are 154. And then you've got Kuwait that are 136. Um, so you're not going to find a group that has that low a kind of a, a rating of, of team. Mm. Um, do you want to talk about Afghanistan quickly? Because they've had some news, haven't they, across the last few days? New manager. They have. They have. A new manager's come in. I mean, turmoil in round one that almost saw them exit due to abandoning their second game. Uh, against against Mongolia, but indeed a new manager announced and a big challenge on on his hands. Um, but a good amount of games to get to get under his. Uh, under don't his don't belt. all the aren't, aren't all the players like refusing to play though? Because there's like corruption accusations there's, within the Afghanistan FA. I wouldn't be stunned if at some point throughout this group Afghanistan were um, picked up a FIFA ban. Or, or withdrawn from, from oh, really? it. Uh, I, I don't know all the ins and outs. There's just way too many rumblings of corruption in the FA, as you've alluded to, and, and things just not quite being right, that I think it will be interesting. It's a shame in many ways to happen full stop. It's also a shame that it might happen after they've already knocked out Mongolia, um, mm. because it would have been cool to, to see Mongolia in here. What I hope is that none of it's true. The players can, can play for their nation and... Uh, the, the new manager gets a, an opportunity to to potentially win some games. Yeah, yeah, I hope so, mate. But he's not. Yeah, he's certainly not entering in the in the easiest moment, is he? In in Afghanistan not. football history. Um, I mean, are we gonna are we gonna away to Qatar, we're gonna, so. we're gonna throw out as we go through? Are we gonna throw out our predictions for the top two? Just very quickly. Yeah, can mine, yeah. I can do mine very quickly. Qatar India for Group A for Group A in top. round two. Qatar India me uh, for me as well. And and as you say, yeah. So India are. Uh, they were in pot two for the draw because uh, they edged out Lebanon, who ended up in pot three. And we'll obviously come to Lebanon towards the end of the video. And you can see just how much of a difference those friendlies and those tournament games that India set up did actually make. It was a, a, a thousand IQ play, really, uh, to find themselves in in pot two and ultimately in group A, which is, as you'll see as we go through, one of the easiest groups on paper. I do think that Kuwait will give it a good go. Um, and I think Afghanistan, with all the sort of turmoil around that, will probably finish bottom of the group. Um it could end up in the order that it is written, uh, which I never really like, but it does happen uh, quite a lot. Uh, should we move on to Group B? Let's do it. We've got in Group B, we have Japan, Syria, North Korea and Myanmar. Myanmar, the victors, the round one victors over Macau, the 5-1 aggregate victory. Um, they beat them 5-1 in the first leg, didn't they? And then Macau got a mm. very, very respectable 0-0 draw in the, in the second They've got a tricky group. They've got North Korea, Syria and Japan. We don't need to talk about Japan or, or Syria in, in a huge amount of detail. They've got two fairly strong teams there, particularly Japan, of course. North Korea, I quite like North Korea because they are, aren't they the lowest ranked team or they're one yeah, of the to, lowest? To get they're to the, the World Cup finals. Yeah, to, to actually mm. qualify. I think they were ranked one, oh, one, one, five. I was going to say one, one, seven. So well, it's, it's, it's around it's gonna, there. It's going to be around there. So, yeah, they are one of the lowest ranked teams or the lowest ranked nation at that point in time to qualify for a World Cup. So, fair play. They've not played for a little while, I don't think, actually. Have they, North Korea? Um, no, I bit. mean, you know, there's, there's all sorts of reasons as to why North Korea don't partake in a number of tournaments that go on. Uh, I will say that, you know, for, for outsiders looking at this group, they'll be surprised to see North Korea in there. North Korea are a very tidy footballing nation. Um, Not played since 2020, I don't think, teams. mate. Yeah, and I, but I expect them to do reasonably OK. I don't expect them to get through the group, by the way. I, I do think that Japan and Syria will get out of this group. But um, I, I do think that they'll they'll probably show their quality against Myanmar. Um, I've not seen anything to suggest they're not playing. Interesting, though. I, I say Syria. Syria have not had a good year. Um, it's still good though. Yeah, lost to Kuwait um, in October. Um, drew with Malaysia. Uh, yeah. two, two, no, no, we know Malaysia are a strong team, but 
I, I, yeah, lost to Vietnam in June in a friendly. I mean, I don't know the quality of the teams that they're putting out, but they've not actually. I, I think that they that they've had a poorer year than I thought. Beat Thailand at the start of the year three one. I just thought they were actually a little bit more. They typically get further in. I think that you look at the likes of um, their, their game against North Korea, maybe a close one, but and that's obviously the first game that they have um, on the sixteenth. Yeah. Um, but that is at home. It's a good opportunity to get three points on the board at home against probably their closest rivals for second spot. Um, and, and you've got to look at Thailand, Malaysia, that these sides are on the up um, as well. So I think yeah, all Syria need to do is do enough. There's no way that anyone tops Japan in this group. Japan are a fantastic side in great form at the moment. So uh, yeah, I, I agree. Expect them to win, win every Japan game. Japan and Syria. Japan and Syria, group B, mate. Let's group C mm. it. Yeah, let's move on to Group C and, I mean, wow, what, what a group, really. Um, mm. South Korea, China, Thailand and Singapore. Uh, Singapore scraping, I'm going to say scraping through round one because they didn't do anywhere as near as well as people thought they would against a Guam. Yeah, I agree. I was surprised at how close that was considering what, what yeah. Guam have been. I mean, they, I mean, they won both games and they had 2-1 and a 1-0 victory, so a 3-1 aggregate win, which is... I guess everything that you'd want. Didn't they in the home game they they really dominated, oh, they them. didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's going to be very interesting because of course South Korea an exceptionally good side, China potentially looking at whether or not they can take a step up in terms of World Cup qualification and and qualify for for this World Cup. Maybe they're one of the outside shouts. Um Thailand and Singapore though no slouches, one of the most consistently stacked groups. I'd say uh, we've seen Thailand and Singapore play a lot uh, in ASEAN tournaments. Uh, they come up against each other and Thailand normally just edge it. Um, but I think that this one, with the exception of South Korea, I think the other three sides are going to battle it out. And I don't think it's going to be easy for China as the uh, the pop no, two I side to, to cruise through. No, I agree, mate. I'm just looking at Thailand's FIFA um, the, the World Cup qualification record that they've got. In 2018, they had their longest ever qualification campaign when they played 16 games. Mm. They must have got through a couple of rounds there. Um, yeah, it's it's a really balanced group, this one. Um, I don't really know... I don't really know how to call this one, actually. Because um, I like Thailand as a, as a side. Um, and of course, they host China in their first game as well on the 16th. So a huge opportunity for them to get an upset in um, and, and potentially. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I think they're, they've had another good year. They won the Suzuki Cup, Mitsubishi Electric Cup. Correct me if I'm wrong. Vietnam. Right? They beat Vietnam. Um, we they we did. did our preview for that. You backed Vietnam and I said, uh, yeah, but Thailand know what they're doing in this tournament. And they did. And they've got... Um, Obviously, they've got Tiras Dangda up front, uh, but they've got a defensive midfielder slash fullback whose name escapes me. Tiraton. They lost eight. They lost eight nil to Georgia in an October friendly. What happened there in Tbilisi? I don't know. What were they doing? A, a European tour that just went horribly wrong. They then drew with Estonia. Okay. No, I, I, I think Thailand will run. Will run. I think South Korea will, will win the group. Goes without saying. I think Singapore will be will be steady and sturdy, but probably not doing enough. Um, and hey, the, the, the Thailand-China game, especially as, as one of the first games of this campaign, is a really interesting one to set the scene. China, if um, trying to get a good win there, I think that then lends itself quite neatly to a, to a South Korea and China top two. And I probably will would would say that now. For my prediction, I'd go South Korea and China. I'm, I'm, I feel like we're being kind of obvious here, aren't we? But Thailand could run them close. Well, I think that part of the purpose of this video is to kind of ident ent identify teams that are likely to come third but could push second. Because I think anyone could look at it and go, yeah, the, the top two sides are most likely in every group because that's the way that the pot system works. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that a lot comes on to that Thailand game, uh, Thailand versus China in Bangkok. I think that a lot of it comes down to that. Um, I think if Thailand were to get a win or even a draw, maybe they'd feel like they, they have a chance. And also it depends... Who does what away in Singapore? Thailand, if they can get a draw or a win against China, their second game is away in Singapore. Um, mm. And and if if China play Thailand and South Korea, first two games in this November international break, and have one or zero points on the board, maybe Thailand have a chance. But mm. I, th I think this is one where fixtures and the fixture order could play quite a big part. Yeah, an interesting one, mate. An interesting one. Um, Group D? Group D. 
Oman. Group D is an interesting one, mate. Oman, Kyrgyzstan, Malaysia, mm. and Chinese Tapai. And you've got what you've got. You've got four what I'd call quite low-ranked nations. With Oman being the best, ranked seventy-second. Um, Kyrgyzstan are ninety-seventh. Malaysia are one three something, and, and Chinese Tapai are one fifty, one five five, or something like that. So it's a real, it's a real kind of I, I think this is quite an open one mate I, I, I think Oman will be in the top two and I think it then it's between Malaysia and, and Kyrgyzstan but Chinese Tapai are not they're, they're not easy they're, they're quite an awkward team especially when you um, when you when you travel away to, they, they always just are quite, you know they're quite technically good they're quite nimble and speedy how they got they're a, they're a good side. They, they are one of the They've better sides They've had a good got year. through from round one. Um, it's it's not an ideal draw for any of the teams in some ways. But I think if you're Malaysia, you're thinking, wow, this is a chance. I this think This is so, a man. chance to get through. Malaysia are a fantastic side. They've come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. I don't think they are... The, the third place team or, or pot three team that I'm backing the most to get through, but they've got an all right group. Um, I think that Aman will, I think Aman will top the group. I think that Aman, uh, if they play to their full capabilities, have got an outside chance of, of running World Cup qualification close as they, as they did reasonably well last time. Um, yeah. K- Kyrgyzstan, Malaysia, Ty- uh, Chinese Taipei. I think Malaysia have got a quite a nice. They've got a quite a nice start, though, mate. Because Malaysia play Kyrgyzstan at home and then away to Chinese to pie. And if you think mm. you get four or six points there, you're off to an absolute flyer. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think I could. I can see that happening, mate. I can see an Omar Malaysia um, top two in this one. Sorry, I've been slightly distracted um, for that when I'm looking at Malaysia because I'm looking at their their games at the turn of the year and they got a friendly but then obviously you've got the asian cup group stage um and mm. it's just it's there, there's a lot of brilliant football coming out from this region isn't there across yeah. the next three to four well in fact the next eight months it seems to be a real constant sort of you've got world cup qualifiers then you've got the asian cup and then you've got the the, the world cup qualifiers return it's really really nice um anyway sorry going back to, to group d that's how i see it mate but i i really like the look of this group um some really interesting matchups, and hey, if yeah, Oman will know that if they don't turn up, yeah, they're in for some some tough games. They don't, they haven't got any absolute gimmies, I would say. No, I completely agree. I, I was, I was literally about to use the exact same phrase: no gimmies. Mm. Um, that they will have to turn up. They will have to play um, towards the end of the group. We might look back and and Oman might have won every game, but I don't think that they they'd have cruised any of it. I don't think they can afford to take their foot off the gas at any point because I think that. Um, Anyone can beat anyone. And sometimes that actually favours the, the top-ranked side if the other teams are taking points off of each other. But no, I think that this is a, a fairly decent shout for Malaysia to run Kyrgyzstan close. Yeah. Um, Group E, I, I think, is slightly different. I think this is probably a bit of a quick one for you and I to blitz through with Iran, mm. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and, and then Hong Kong. Hong Kong, who absolutely smashed... Bhutan 4-0 in the first leg, but then lost 2-0 to Bhutan in the second leg, which was absolutely mad. In in isolation, that was a horrendous result for Hong Kong, that second leg defeat. They've got a really tough group here, haven't they, um, with Iran, um, Turkmenistan and, and Uzbekistan. They've also got Iran in their Asian Cup um, group stage as well. So they just they sort of can't get away from them. One of the, the strongest teams in the region, of course, Iran. I think they're going to struggle, mate, Hong, Hong Kong in, in this group. Um, and I think... That if you look at their recent, they're not the the Hong Kong team of I don't know four to five years ago that were really sort of knocking at the door at that kind of next level up um, in in Asian teams because they they did quite well in in a World Cup qualification campaign was it was it for the last one to be fair twenty eighteen and twenty twenty two they've had good they've had really strong World Cup qualification campaigns. Um, and I just feel that this team, all you need to do is look at the results of, of this year. They've not won many games. They've only beaten Brunei and Bhutan. Um, they've got a couple of good players. Oh, what's the guy's name? Michael Udal Bolasor. That's it. That's the, probably the best name um, I've ever heard. It's up but, there. I, I think this is this is quietly one of the worst groups in terms of from a Hong Kong perspective. Mm. Um, because they're all just annoyingly good. Yeah. You know, Iran get to a... World Cups 
a lot. Um, Uzbekistan, very, very comfy side uh, that I expect to get to the latter stages. Uh, Turkmenistan are good as well. You, you know, it's and, and, and Hong Kong begin um, their, their campaign away in Tehran, away to Iran, um, and then have to host Turkmenistan. And they might be hosting their first game on the back of a heavy defeat because Iran is just such a good side. I think that Hong Kong, like you say, I mean, the very fact that they're participating in round one um, obviously means they're one of the weaker sides in the region. But that result, their most yeah. recent result, which was a warning sign in terms of taking their foot off the gas in a game that they should just that they should never lose um, in round one. I think there's worrying signs for them um, in this group. And I just think it's quietly a horrible group. I do think that Iran and Uzbekistan will, will come top two. Yeah, no, completely agree. Completely agree. But but um, going from, from one end of the scale to the other is, is Group yeah. F now with a real, again, a nice looking lineup with, with Iraq, who, again, you'd probably expect to be the, the favourite to win the group. Um, then Vietnam, Philippines and Indonesia. That wasn't one of the groups that had two spaces from the first round, though, was it? That's just the that's just been drawn that way. No, there was only there was only we're getting to that. That's later, isn't it? That... Uh, it's either the next group or the group after. Um... Uh, it's the group after. It's Group H. Oh, I thought it was Group. Oh, okay. We'll come to that anyway. We'll come to that. We're on we're on Group uh, we're on Group F. Vietnam, um, Philippines, Indonesia. Indonesia are the the team that. Um, sort of navigated successfully their their round one uh, fixtures against Brunei with a 12 nil aggregate win. How do you see it going for them, mate? As as uh, one of well, one of the lowest ranked or the lowest ranked team in this group, but they've got you know, they're one four five. Philippines are only one three eight. Um Vietnam are a bit further up at ninety four, but how do you see it going? Indonesia have the best chance as a, as a pot four team to get through. Indonesia are better than Philippines, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Yep. Big Seen step. enough of them recently to know that Indonesia are on an upward trajectory, and I think that the Philippines are on a subtly downward trajectory. Not a lot, yeah. but subtly. Vietnam will be tough. Vietnam, Indonesia is is the decider. Iraq should beat everyone. Um, they're a very solid side. They might get run close by Vietnam, to be fair. Vietnam are, are good. They got to the latter stages of the last World Cup qualification. And let's not underestimate how good a side they are. Um, I think Indonesia-Vietnam is an incredible shootout for second spot. I just don't think that the Phil I think the Philippines will be a horrible side to play if you need three points, because I don't think it's guaranteed. But I think that Indonesia is a side that popped up in round one. Bizarrely, I wasn't expecting to see them there. And then all of a sudden, they're in round one. Now they're into round two. They've got one of the easiest groups for a pop four side to compete in. Um, no disrespect to the other sides in there. And I think that they've got a real, real chance to give it a good go and run Vietnam and Philippines close for that second spot. Yeah, they've got some good players, haven't they? They've, mm -hmm. they've sort of, again, if you look at their squad or, or the squad that was was called up and, and part of that round one victory, they've started to, or they've, they're introducing some some new players that haven't, well, that basically that they can probably tap into eligibility um, yeah. criteria to get them in. So, Raffle Streak of um, again, apologies about pronunciation there of Adio Den Haag um, plays up front for them in the uh, <clears throat> uh, Eredivisie. Is part of that Indonesia squad. We know about um, they've got uh, Elkan Bagger, of course. They've got Jordi Amat. Find him on the team well. Oh, here he is. Sorry, Ipswich. Yeah, he's at Ipswich. Yeah. yeah, of course he is. Yeah, Jordi Amat, ex Prem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, playing in in Malaysia now. Sandy Walsh who plays in uh, the Belgium Pro League for Mechelen. Um, and of course, you know, players that, and, and all those players, I, I believe, are perfectly fine and eligible to play for Indonesia. Um, but there's also some players from the region that play in the region that are very, very capable and very, very good as well that sit around them. They form quite a good overall squad in the way that uh, Shin Taeyong gets them playing. Um, I just think that they're, I think they're going to be tough to break down. And I think they pack a real punch on the counter attack. Yeah, that Raphael Streak, who's who's of ADO Den Haag, who's made a couple of appearances now for Indonesia. He's he's only twenty. Yeah, he's mm. playing for the under twenties last year. Um, was born in yeah was born in the Netherlands. Um, so that could be a, a, a an interesting player to watch for for them mm. in, in what is going to be a really really interesting group. Um, oh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with the Philippines. They've not had a, a a horrendous year. They've not had a great one, but like results. But they lost the Chinese to Pai earlier this year and then drew with them. They only edged past Afghanistan 2-1. It's not like, um, yeah, 
it, there, there's really not much, there's not going to be much in it. And you think there's an opportunity there for, for Indonesia. And hey, what a great story that would be if they could really step up to the plate in the games against Vietnam and, and cause, cause a, what would probably be, would you call it an upset? It would be, wouldn't it? It'd be an upset if... I think Indonesia getting through to round three is an upset for everyone unless you are from Indonesia. I think that they do have belief that they can get to the latter stages. Um, but yeah. I, it's, it has to be an upset. Any round one team getting through to round three has to be an upset. Who are we saying then? Iraq and Vietnam? <laughs> no, I'm going to say I'm going to say Iraq and Indonesia. Fair play. Fair play. I'm going to back it. I, you know, your, I, um, yeah. your Bam Bang Pamunkas shirt on and... Absolutely. I'm going to say it's going to be Iraq, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines. And I think that it will be very close between Vietnam and Indonesia. And I don't mean any disrespect to the Philippines or Filipino fans when I say that. I just think that that's the way that it's going to go. Fair, I could be wrong. Play. No, no, no. All for it. All for it. G's amazing, but for, for slightly differing reasons. The first one yeah. and the main one being um, the inclusion um, of a certain Pakistan who created history last time out the story of round one uh and uh, to be honest the story of round two with their opening fixture away yeah. to saudi arabia um saudi arabia of course who beat argentina at the world cup uh, yeah. just last year and and basically a year on from um downing messi and the argentines uh, they'll be hosting pakistan ranked one nine three the lowest ranked sides of course still in the competition, who famously got uh, to round two thanks to that incredible win in Islamabad um, mm. and, and beating Cambodia, which was a shock. Um, and, and we've had a, a supporter of Cambodia comment on on the video covering it, saying, "You know, we're all just like can't believe it um, mm. that they that they went out." And that's no disrespect to Pakistan. We backed Cambodia as well. We thought that they were a far more astute outfit. But Pakistan, with uh, with the new manager um, Stephen Constantine. They are looking more solid, but it's a horrible group. There's, <laughs> yeah, it, there's, it, it's it, a yeah. shame, actually, um, in, in some ways. It's amazing because they're never going to qualify for the World Cup. So why not have these incredible away days that they're going to have? But Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Tashikistan is another horror group. It's similar yeah. to Hong Kong. It's a horrible group. Um, Saudi Arabia are so good. But you know what? I'm really looking forward to the 16th. I'm really looking forward to Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. I just hope that the players can enjoy it because they, they are going to lose a lot of games in this group. Um, but let's not take away from the fact that they've already made history. Yeah, that's it. They, that, this is... I wouldn't say it's, it's it doesn't matter because, of course, it does. There's there's mm. pride and there's there's national pride there. And, and of course, they will, they'll give it their all, mate. But these are... Um, they're going to, they're about to play sort of six cup finals almost so just enjoy and treasure every moment and i the 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 first game away to to saudi arabia is is insane and then hey they've got then they potentially go from their their toughest fixture to their i say easiest that's not quite the right way of putting it but then um to Shikistan in islamabad is an interesting one if they can create an amazing atmosphere could they can constantine and the boys create more history by picking up any form of point it would be sensational um saudi arabia and jordan or tajikistan are we bothered we're kind of not i are we? I, I, th I think jordan um I, I think saudi arabia have a good well, i think saudi arabia will get to the world cup um the same as uh, we've seen in a few groups with japan and south korea as well um take your mm. pick out of jordan and tajikistan i i think that it will be uh, jordan um but it will be one of those two but but as you say Hopefully, Pakistan can pick up a point in Islamabad because I just think that that would be brilliant in front of uh, in front of the home crowd um, to make to make more history and get their first point in round two, um, which would be yeah. Fun. Um, Group H, mate, couple to go. Um, we've got UAE, Bahrain, Yemen, and Nepal. Nepal and Yemen. That this is the group. You're dead right. This is the group where two of the round one participants qualified for because as part of the draw there were two there was one group that had two slots wasn't it and this yeah. is that so yeah. Yemen and Nepal both participated in round one both were victorious uh Nepal beating Laos across two legs and Yemen beating Sri Lanka across the two legs and believe it or not I do not have the results in front of me so I have just plucked that from nowhere and I'm kind of happy with myself for finding that information locked in there somewhere how do we see group H shaping up my friend or more importantly 
do you give either of Yemen or Nepal a chance to sneak in the top two above Bahrain? No, uh, I don't. Um, oh, you say it's just so deflating. Cutthroat. So deflating when you talk like that. I just think that as much as I'd love them to, Bahrain and UAE again are just good. You know? Okay, then what about Nepal or Yemen? Who's coming third? Let's look at it from that point of view. Yemen. Do you think? I think Yemen. You think? I think Yemen. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It, it comes down to the game against each other. Um, <laughs> the, the games against each the other. The games against each other. Yeah. Um, their final game, actually, in, in June 2024, is Yemen versus Nepal. Um, cup final. It's, it's a cup final. And of course, they play each other in the November international break they as do. well. Um, yeah, on the 21st, Nepal host Yemen in Kathmandu. Um, I think that. You do have to take into account the fact that Nepal's first game's away in UAE. Yemen's first game's at home to Bahrain. Yemen are not... They could fight for a draw against Bahrain. And they'll probably go into it with a bit more confidence than, than Nepal, who would have probably had a tough time away in uh, in Dubai. True. Uh, I mean, they'd have, they'll probably have a nice time in many ways, but, um, but they'll probably have a tough time there. I, I think that Yemen edge out... Um, it's a nice holiday destination, isn't it? And yeah. I think, you know, in, in some ways they might have to view it like that. Um, I think that Yemen will edge out Nepal across their little double legger. Um, it's not a great group for two sides from round one to go into. I think that it, it would have been nicer, obviously from a Mino Nation perspective, for it to not be UAE and Bahrain and for there to be someone, a pot two side that's just a bit more gettable. I'm not, I don't have any off the top of my head. I, I can't really hit you with anything proper there but you know what I mean I, I, I think that yeah. this is a top two bottom two situation I yeah I agree I agree look Nepal versus Yemen that's on the 21st of November they've got their as you said their their subsequent or the, the second version of that is right at the end of the campaign it's good to see them play games as we talk about a couple of players always to, to throw out there Anj um, Anjan Bista for Nepal 12 goals in like 50 plus caps he's a bit of a Bala when he wants to be and then Al Matari is the captain of Yemen who is basically if they're going to score a goal it's normally through some bit of play that he's done or if he's just smashing it in himself um, yeah but we're going UAE and Bahrain there aren't we and then group I is the final group of round two to dissect briefly and touch on Bangladesh are the nation that um, swatted aside Maldives yeah, it's the knowledge, my friend. It's in there. They swatted aside the Maldives and it was a shock, but it wasn't a shock. Um, we actually predicted the Bangladesh win. It was a shock if you were to look at the rankings and make your guesses and predictions from there. They've got an interesting group, mate. Lebanon, Palestine and Australia. Let's just say that the Aussies will, they'll probably be pretty satisfied with this draw and they'll be, unless something goes incredibly wrong, um, be, um, be winning the group. and. Um, what about the other three, though, mate? I think that um, the first thing that we have to say is uh, Palestine, we're not 100% sure if they will play in this November international break or if those games will be postponed if there is another opportunity in the international window. Of course, they, their home game, as it would be against Australia, is due to be played in, in Q8. Uh, but I understand for, for obvious reasons they, they're having some issues getting the squad together, et cetera, et cetera, with regard current events. Good point. Yeah. But Good point. outside of that, looking strictly at uh, if they do manage to get a team together and, and if they do get to, to play those games, I think it's really tough to pick between Palestine and Lebanon. Palestine's full strength squad is very good. Um, they're, they're a top 100 side. Lebanon are very good as well. Of course, geographically very close together. Um I think Australia will look at this and be very, very pleased, uh, particularly with their opening game at home to Bangladesh. Mm. Uh, they'll, they'll really look to set the tone in that game. Uh, Australia are another side that get to World Cups all the time, so no surprise that uh, we expect them to top the group. But I think it's, I think it's really the flip of a coin for me between Palestine and Lebanon um, as, as to who I think will get through. I, I do think it's a tough one for Bangladesh. I think that um, whilst they did well to overcome the Maldives, I think that beating a side anywhere close to the level of Lebanon and Palestine is just a step step too far for them. Um, and I think it's not quite the same as um, Pakistan, but 
let's just hope that Bangladesh can pick up some home points and, and get the crowd going behind them at home because I think it will be a tough, t- tough away games for them um, uh, for the rest of this group. I, I'm gonna, ba- I'm, I'm gonna hope that Palestine can play some some games and that they're not yeah. um, punished for not being able to get squads together, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and say that. Purely based on the footballing abilities of the nations, I would back an Australia-Palestine top two. But I do think that Lebanon will run it close for second spot. I yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think um, I don't think Palestine will play. Actually, now that you've you've sort of nudged me on that, I, I and I, and I think it'll be Australia-Lebanon. So I assume that that group will probably just go to under th- to under three, won't it? Um, which which is a shame. Um, yeah, uh, I yeah, I'd probably go Australia, Australia, Lebanon there. Um, for group I, and that's it. Boom. Yeah, and and who do you think? Do you think Indonesia best placed uh, round one team, given the group that they're in with Philippines, Vietnam? I think um, the others have got a tough draw. Yes, my only other one. I think Singapore have a an okay one with Thailand and China. Obviously, it, it's tough. Um, it's not as good as. Um, as I say, as good, you know what I mean, uh, yeah. as Indonesia. Yeah, I'd say Indonesia, best place first round team to to have a good crack at getting in the top two. Um, and worst group has to be Pakistan, doesn't it? I mean, it's a yeah, what? A, it's, yeah, it's a it's a wretched group, but it's it it's is. not. It's an amazing group. Yeah, yeah, that's what you want, isn't it? It's like when you're a, a small team and you're going through like a, a cup run, you either want something that you would deem actually wow that's that's a that's a winnable tie or you want something that ultimately is is like man city away or man united away because you want that big big um that that, that big game that big match experience um and I, I think saudi arabia i think saudi arabia away is that man united away from a pakistan perspective you know i think if you go back a few months um Otis Khan, by the way, is available to play. Um, FIFA have sorted out. Yeah, I saw that. It's taken them long enough, wasn't it? Yeah, given that he represented them before. Anyway, um, yeah, I just, as I said already, I just hope the players for Pakistan enjoy it because it's so tough. But but as you say, view it as as like a cup game that you're not, you weren't ever going to qualify for the World Cup. So Mm. just enjoy round two. Uh, Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride because there's going to be some great games. And and also, you know, uh, not... Not this year, but uh, the sixth of June, twenty twenty four, Pakistan hosts Saudi Arabia, um, which I think is is great as well. And, and I hope that there's still plenty of passion. I'm sure there will be ahead of that um, fixture as well. In terms of comments, predictions, etc., get down who you think is the best placed minnow nation um, to get through or at least run things close. Uh, we don't need a full breakdown of who's going to qualify because, as, as we've alluded to. I think it's fairly obvious in round two, unless you drastically disagree with us and then get that down in the comment uh, as well. Uh, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you don't already. And of course, November international break is almost upon us. We cannot wait for it. There's going to be loads and loads of DNQ content across that sort of week long period. So definitely Mm -hmm. make sure that you subscribe and flick on that notification bell as well. Love it. Love it, my friend. And we'll see you next time.